Hello, I'm Holly Tompkins, the Senior Development Review Planner with the Department of Planning and Zoning. We're here with another discussion on the Southern Kent Island Sanitary Project. Our topic uh, of this segment is zoning and lot mergers. With me is Steve Cahoon, the Director of Planning and Zoning. Welcome, Steve. Yep, thank you. We have a lot to cover, so yes. let's get right to it. <laughs> yes, we do. So exactly two weeks ago on November 12, 2013, the commissioners introduced Ordinance 1324 titled, An Act Concerning the Use and Merger of Certain Substandard Lots in the Neighborhood Conservation Zoning District. What is the intended purpose of the ordinance? The county commissioners introduced Ordinance 1324 to move forward with addressing uh, areas of public health concern as identified in the 2006 Comprehensive Water and Sewer Plan maps. The purpose of this bill is to the extent possible have property owners in the neighborhood conservation zoning district conform to the existing zoning regulations for lot sizes. Uh, this is done by requiring lots that are in common ownership on November 12, 2013 to be combined to meet the minimum lot sizes of that zoning district. The ordinance applies to both properties that are improved with homes as well as vacant lots. And if this bill is passed, lots would have to be merged together and combined into a single lot in order to hook to public sewer or to get a building permit. Um, this ordinance is intended to limit the construction of substandard lots that do not meet the required lot size of the current zoning whenever possible. Why don't the lots conform to current zoning? These subdivisions were created before zoning or land use regulations existed. Um, when these subdivisions were created, there were no minimum lot sizes, there was no zoning in place, and people were able to just go to the courthouse and record plats and um, start to transfer properties. Okay. You mentioned the Neighborhood Conservation Zoning District. When was it created? The NC Zoning District was created in 1987. The county comprehensively changed zoning designations and created the NC District at that time. So NC zoning has been in place in the nine communities on Southern Kent Island ever since 1987. A big question is what are the existing designations for the nine communities on Southern Kent Island with the failing septic systems? The zoning designation for all nine of the communities is neighborhood conservation and also we call it NC for short. Um, the NC Zoning District is intended to preserve the character, density, and scale of existing residential neighborhoods. There are six categories of NC districts that allow existing neighborhoods to conform to different uh, consistent lot sizes. Um, I'll explain the six different categories in just a second, but they, um, the NC District also allows for infill development, which is supposed to be compatible with the lot sizes of, surround, of the surrounding area. Um, the different NC districts are based on uh, setting different minimum lot sizes uh, and that was the NC designations were based on the existing pattern of development in 1987 when these uh, categories were placed on these on these subdivisions. Um, the different categories in the NC zoning district are NC1 which is a one acre average lot size, NC2 which is a two acre minimum lot size, NC5, which is a five acre minimum lot size. Then we have some other NC districts which have smaller lot sizes, NC8, which is 8,000 square foot minimum lot size, NC15, which is a 15,000 square foot minimum lot size, and the most common uh, one that we see in these communities is NC20, which has an average lot size of 20,000 square feet. Um, and in order to um, assist people, we have created a, a little chart that will be on our web page as um, identified here um, that outlines each subdivision that's being, uh, each of the nine subdivisions, it outlines the zoning of the subdivision, the conforming lot sizes, the average uh, size of the lots in those, in those uh, developments. But to run through that uh, quickly, um, the zoning designation for Mattapeak Estates, Sunny Isle of Kent, Chesapeake Estates, Kentmore, Kent Island Estates, and Roman Coke 
is NC20. So the minimum which requires a 20,000 square foot minimum lot size. Uh, Queen Anne Colony is zoned NC15, requiring a 15,000 square foot lot size. Uh, the Normans or Bat's Neck area has two zonings. It includes NC20 and NC1, depending on the location of the property. And the Tower Gardens subdivision actually has three different zoning designations, which include NC20, NC1, and NC2, depending where you're located in the, uh, in the subdivision. Um, and as I mentioned, this, this table will be uh, posted on our webpage for easy reference for residents to, uh, to identify their, their community and what the zoning is. Okay, great. You're talking about nine communities on Southern Kent Island, but the ordinate as written would apply to all NC zoning districts? That is correct. The NC zoning um, districts are throughout the county, not just on Southern Kent Island. Um, and this, this ordinance would be placed in the NC district standards that would apply to all NC zoned properties. Uh, when creating a zoning regulation like this, it is required that it, it apply to entire districts. We really can't pick and choose what parts of that zoning district of regulation would apply to. Um, so this would apply to all NC districts, not on public sewer. Okay. Uh, something we haven't talked about specifically yet is what role does the comprehensive water and sewerage plan play in extending the public sewer to Southern Kent Island? Certainly. Uh, the Comprehensive Water and Sewer Plan is a planning document that works hand in hand with the county's comprehensive plan in identifying the extension of sewer service areas and the time frames uh, for sewer service to two areas. The 2006 Comprehensive Water and Sewer Plan maps that are in effect identify the nine communities on Southern Kent Island as areas of public health concern and to be served by public sewer. So tell me a little more about the mapping aspect of the 2006 Comprehensive Water and Sewer Plan. Sure. Um, the county is using the service areas identified on the 2006 Comprehensive Water and Sewer Plans maps in reviewing the potential of merger of this merger ordinance that we're discussing today. Um, it's important to note that in some cases, the service areas on these maps do not include all the parcels within these subdivisions. Um, the water and sewer plan specifically excluded blocks of vacant lots where no homes with failing septic systems existed. Um, so um, between the existing zoning and the 2006 comprehensive water and sewer plan maps, the county is utilizing existing public policy documents that have been in place for many years in evaluating this ordinance and identifying the lots that may qualify as infill uh, after, after merger. Uh, the maps identifying the anticipated merger based on the common ownership have been placed on the county website for public review. Uh, would you please elaborate on the information used to prepare the maps? Sure. Um, behind us is an example of, of a map that somebody can pull up from, on our county webpage. Um, this is Sunny Kent, and what the county um, did was the county uh, GIS data uh, was used in order to identify uh, the common ownership of properties um, and th we use current the current ownership to put these maps together we used the current zoning that has been in place since 1987 and the 2006 comprehensive water and sewer plan maps to identify the service area um, in these subdivisions the maps identify how parcels are anticipated on being merged to determine the number of resulting lots. Um, the maps identify that there would be a, a maximum of 650 vacant lots available once this merger or if this merger ordinance is in effect and goes into place um, and these lots are merged based on common ownership. Would you please talk about how this law would apply and when parcels would, would be required to merge. So could you give us some examples? Sure. Um, most of the properties that we're discussing are zoned NC20, which requires a minimum lot size of 20,000 square feet. So we'll use that as our in our example. Um, and here is a, is a example of seven lots prior to the legislation being adopted. And if the legislation is adopted, we have a couple different examples represented here. If somebody owns an individual lot as lot seven on the end and owner number four, 
um, but they do not have adjacent ownership and cannot combine with any other parcels, that would remain a standalone parcel and remain an 8,000 square foot lot because that is to the extent possible uh, how they could merge. Um, lot six is another example of that. Lots four and five here are two lots side by side in common ownership and do have the ability to be combined um, at 8,000 square foot each they would total 16,000 square foot and would not get to the total of a 20,000 square foot conforming lot, um, but that is to the extent possible that they could be combined. So they would be required to be merged. Um, if somebody has three lots, as in lots one, two, and three, they would be required to be combined. They have enough to make a conforming lot. They have to get over the 20,000 square foot lot size, but they don't have an, enough residual to create a second conforming lot. So in an example of 8,000 square foot lots, it would take somebody having um, five adjacent lots totaling 40,000 square feet to have enough area to be divided into two conforming lots. Ordinance 1324 specified property in common ownership as of November 12, 2013 that would be merged. Would you please explain why that date was included? Yes. Uh, November 12, 2013 is the date the ordinance was introduced. It's, uh, it was important to include this date as a placeholder while the bill goes through the review process and the county commissioners hold meetings, hearings, and accept public comment on the bill. If owners had the ability to retitle lots during the review process of the ordinance, the intent of the bill could be greatly undermined. Therefore, it was necessary to make the bill retroactive to limit the possible number of substandard lots. Doesn't the bill also include a disclosure requirement? Yes, it does. Um, the bill requires that a seller of a lot subject to the merger under this law that they must disclose that information in writing to any buyer. Okay, good. What is the process for review of the proposed ordinance? Um, the review of the ordinance, there are several steps in the review of the ordinance that are required and then a couple above and beyond steps that the county is taking, like um, putting these clips together, putting information on the web page. Um, the, uh, the planning commission uh, review uh, we'll, be, we'll have to review this ordinance and the Planning Commission will, will review and make a possible recommendation during their December 12, 2013 meeting um, at the Department of Planning and Zoning and our offices are located at 160 Courseville Drive. That's their regular Planning Commission uh, monthly meeting and the Planning Commission may make a recommendation during that meeting or continue their discussion to their January 9, 2014 meeting. Um, after receiving the, after making a recommendation, they forward that recommendation to the county commissioners. Um, and after the county commissioners receive that recommendation from the planning commission, they are required to hold public hearings to accept additional public comment on the ordinance. Um, this hearing is expected early next year, um, depending on when the planning commission forwards a recommendation. In addition to those required meetings, um, a public outreach meeting is scheduled for December 19th, uh, 2013 at the Kent Island High School from 7 to 10 p.m. Is there anything else to add? Uh, yes. Um, this is, uh, there's a lot of questions re re revolving around this bill, a lot of interest. Um, if you have questions, please feel free to contact the Department of Planning and Zoning. Um, you can call our office at 410-758-1255 to uh, ask questions, to set up appointments to meet with staff, um, to discuss your specific situation as a property owner on Southern Kent Island. Um, and we, our employees would be happy to sit down with you. I'd be happy to sit down with you um, to go through this to, to identify how it affects you. Also, I can be reached at email at S. Cahoon, at, which is S C O H O O N at QAC.org. Um, and please email me if, with any of your questions, and we'd ha be happy to get back to you with a written response. Um, but also, please remember the uh, public information meeting held on December 19th. And if you attend, you will have the opportunity to meet individually with employees uh, to review the maps, to review your specific situation um, during that meeting. Great. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you.